quite the meltdown yesterday. So um, on the open, we we did hold the prior, the 265 here. It looks like we kind of spiked below it a few times. I was off the desk while this was going on. We broke to the upside. We couldn't take out the pre-market highs. Um, and then in the afternoon, I guess around 1.30, the first, we had our first big red bar, um, which took us through the morning low. Um, and we started to hold kind of below 265. Um, before we had this six dollar meltdown in the final final hour, which was something to behold. So now we've had we've had three of those in four days, which I didn't go back and look over the last since the financial crisis. But honestly, other than the financial crisis, I can't imagine we've had one, two, three, three meltdowns at end of days in a four day period. That's that's a lot of meltdowns. Sometimes two in a week yet. Um, normally. When you have something like this, and then you have a pop and a gap up, you look for volatility compression, like we saw for the first half of the day, where we were in a pretty tight range, about a buck and a half. Um, and then this range actually expanded and took out all the entire day's range. So that's that's bearish. There's no other way to really describe that. I'm just talking purely from a just volatility standpoint. Um, putting aside the fact that we didn't quite get to the 200 day moving average, which I think was around this area here. Um, now, the more common thing is, you know, just looking at it, like we do have some down moves in the morning, but even if you go the other day, we came off from 262 and a half, we had the flush through 260, and then we had the strong rally back, right? So we're not seeing, the meltdowns are happening at the end of the day where people are just dumping in the final hour and no one really wants to go out long overnight. Um, but we are seeing not so much downside follow through. I mean, right? This like here's weakness. The next morning we were higher. Here's weakness. The next morning we were higher. Um, here's weakness. The next morning we're higher. So it's not like at this point you would think people would be incentivized maybe to buy at the end of the day since we're not gapping lower, but they're scared, which is kind of interesting. Um, It's very possible we just kind of this becomes a range for the next week or something like that um, between 258 and 267. Um, and then we just look for some compression of volatility and then um, some closes above this this kind of area from the last few days. And then we'll see. Um, we failed the day of the Fed. You know, we tried to break above 272. And this was the beginning of the most recent down move right here. This was the $15 move in, in three days. So if we started to close back in this area up here and start to grind higher, then I'd start to think about you know, maybe the market having a more meaningful meaningful rally. Best case scenario, though, is we take out the February lows um, and we just get all sorts of panic, huge volume, um, and that that's us, sets us up for a real more sustained rally with an extremely good risk reward. Um, all right, so for today, so so far we, we failed to hold above 261 and a half. Um, it looks like we might make a, you know, the first spot, we go to the after hours yesterday, it was around 260, 50. So we popped up here, this is about two and a half bucks. Um, if we start to hold below 260.50 or so after the market open and break to the downside, absolutely can play for a flush to 258, 259 area. Um, I'd be careful about looking for any more downside than that. Again, we've we've had hard down moves on the open. We haven't had those complete meltdowns though. We'd have to really see a morning, you know, a consolidation below 260 for the first hour or something like that for you to have more confidence in a in a breakdown below the recent lows. Um, now remember when we flushed below 260 a couple of days ago, um, I bought this, um, I think around 259 and a quarter, that led to a quick pop back up to 261 um, and then 262. And then in the afternoon we had the big the big $3, $3 move. So I would be kind of looking at, um, at something like that again. Not, not, not this all the way back up, but kind of in here, some type of balance back up to 260.50 to 261. Um, if you capture one to two dollars on these moves, you gotta kind of have to, you know, reset, take off the whole thing, take off most of it, and then look for the for the next the next the next setup. Um, the only time you want to try to like really hold is at the end of the day, since 
Are we just getting these massive meltdowns? Um, what have you learned? 150. So, yeah, I hadn't actually looked at it. So, what we got yesterday was it failed three times at the prior day's resistance or the prior day's closing area. So, it was, and you can bring this back all the way to here. I don't remember if we talked about 153.40, but clearly that was um, that was the spot it had trouble on the open, had trouble in the midday, had trouble again. Um, this was acting stronger than the spies again, and then they just they pulled the rug for a three plus dollar move. So 150 is the spot this morning. Um, yeah, so a flush below 150 starts to hold back above 150, and then you see it above, let's call it 150.70, and you look for move into 152 right here, and where it failed yesterday. Um, all right, Lulu. So Lulu, they reported after the close, the numbers were good. Um, the reaction was good, it's at an all-time high, um, but we have this environment we're dealing with. We have, we have an environment where um, the market is just getting a lot of rug pulls, and so gap ups are, you know, something where people look to sell, especially like that one yesterday, was it MKC, where the numbers weren't actually that good? Um, where the numbers are really good like this and the guidance is good, um, sometimes it can act, actually act as a, a refuge in a storm where, I don't know, people are looking at the market and it's really bad. And then they see, they're like, oh, this company's reporting good numbers, they're raising guidance. People like will go to hide and, and you know, so even it's quite interesting. Like we could have a weak day today. And if this is, you know, if this one's holding above, I would say even 83 and a half or so and consolidating and then breaks to the upside, you could have a multi-point, multi-point up move. Um, I've seen that so many times where the market is just volatile and weak and people just want to hide, they, they try to find a few good stocks. Um, and that's, you know, that's where they hide out. So if you look at it in the after hours, if you get the 86, um, this was a huge pull in. Um, I didn't really have time to sit here and trade it, but it, it did, after coming into the mid 82s, it bounced back to 84. So, I mean, looking at it, it's kind of like below 84, you have to think it could flush all the way back down into this area. But if it's consolidating, I mean, it doesn't even have to, I mean, the strongest case would be consolidating above 84 where you would look for it to, to come into the, to the after hours high. But even like after 10 o'clock, it's still above, I would say 83, 40 in this area here. I would still be looking to see if it, if it catches a bid and moves higher. Um, and watch relative to the market. If the market comes down and it's below 259, and this is still, you know, hanging out between 83 and a half, 84 and a half, um, pretty good sign for it on the long side. I'm happy to, you know, if the price action dictates, happy to, to flip over to the, the short side on it. Um, the next one is RH, which this is a tough stock to trade. Um, there isn't a lot of really good stuff in play, so I figured we'd cover it. If there was three or four good things in play, I might have taken might have taken a pass on it. Um, let's first of all show you the daily. This this thing had really gotten beaten down a while ago. I think sub fifty it was it was down in the thirty, actually in the twenties. It's a really good company. I was surprised that it got this far down. Um, so it'd come off from 100 all the way down to 25. And then it rallied all the way back to 80, and then they cut it in half, like in like real short order. Um, but now people realize they have it's really strong earnings power. And I think it's just a question of what multiple it's going to trade at. I think the earnings power is like five, six dollars a share. And so you know the question really is: does it justify getting back above this 86 here? I could easily see it you know, failing at that 86 and coming in and testing the top of this, this region range. So let's look at the 30 minute. So, yeah, I mean, it was above 86 in the pre-market. If we, we zoom out, we kind of see the top of this range, I guess 80 is the first spot. So I'm more inclined to look at a failure here um, above 86, maybe even, we've well, already kind of saw it, let's zoom in and just, this is what it could look like after the open too. So in this situation, what I, I'll usually look for is a failure up here above 86, a hard down move, um, not enough volume in the pre-market really to make a judgment, but say it fails above 86 and you see it coming quickly to 84, and then let's me comes up to 85 and then just is holding there, that's where I would look to enter because it's like a dollar of risk, and I would look for the rollover back down to 81 to 80, something like that. And every once in a while, 
you'll walk them to the move all the way back down to the mid-70s. Um, in fact, if it starts showing that behavior up here, I would buy some options expiring tomorrow, the 76 puts, um, just in case it has the com a complete meltdown. It will still be cheap. Um, so that's that. Um, and then MGNX did a secondary. Um, I don't know if it's going to flush all the way down there again. It was down there earlier this morning, and I didn't see it until it had already bounced above $22. But certainly buying it within 25 cents of its secondary price uh, is pretty good based on the just look at the daily, and you'll see why. It had run up from 22 and a half to 32 and a half. Now to get the secondary down, they had to price it all the way down here. But in these situations, usually you'll get a rally back, um, maybe even all the way back to 25 over the next couple of days once the secondary is out of the way. So at least 24. So not really nearly as good as a buy here uh, at 2250, where it's holding above right now. But, but certainly, you know, this is pretty close to the secondary price. Anyway, it should be on your radar just in case they do the do the flush there. Um, Facebook, wow. Okay, so this was when was it was one fifty five in the pre market when I started looking at it. Um, I put one fifty two on the sheet where it kind of bounced to yesterday and it's already through that. So this is you know this really did look like a, a potential major bottom here. Um, Strong. Next morning, we had that trade highlighted in the morning meeting, buying at 156. Actually, it was yesterday. Um, then it took out the after hours high. Um, did short it here, and I felt because of this, the size of this move, it couldn't reverse all the way. So covered before I left the desk. It did come all the way back down to um, 152. Um, as long as it's having this type of volatility and this type of up and down, uh, it's worth watching intraday. Um, you can easily see it bottoming in this area here again, getting a big you know, bounce back up to 154, 155. Um, you just got to be careful with it. You get caught on the wrong side, you got you to gotta get out quickly of all your shares or most of your shares. Um, but when you're on the right side, quickly take profits into one and a half, two dollar move. Um, there's usually a few good trades in there. Um, obviously on the open, the, the bounce trade was good. And then I guess once it had reversed, I wasn't around for this. I guess once it had reversed and started to... Um, get below this 157 being shorted. It's actually below 156, but this is hard. This went down here and then popped all the way back up. So this is, this is pretty wild action. I think for today, if you get the bounce into 154 and a half, 155, this would be the spot where you'd be looking to short it at pre-market resistance. Um, so a lot going on. Um, obviously, you have the VXX as well and the Evixi. Um, if you take a look at the actual VIX itself, it's 2260 right now, looking like in the pre-market, it didn't really move up a commensurate amount. But the, the amount that the market tanked at the end of the day, you can even see on the VIXX. VXX um, this is just having trouble here at 50. So this is worth keeping an eye on if it continues to have trouble in this this band here. And the market catches a bid, you could be looking at a move all the way back down to 46, 46 and a half. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.